In the AP Calc test, there's four sections to the exam. There's two multiple choice sections. One, you can use a calculator. One, you cannot use a calculator. There's two free response sections. One, you can use a calculator. One, you cannot use a calculator. So what we're going to do this morning before lunch is go through some free response questions so you kind of see and understand what in the heck they look like. Okay, the free response cares the, scares the bejeebers out of people most of the time. It's the multiple choice that usually aren't too bad. Okay, yes, some of them are really hard, but you've got the answer options there. They're a little more straightforward. These, whoo, some years they, they have a problem and you go, uh, yeah, I have no clue. So, what you need to do is understand how it's scored a little bit, okay? You get points just for writing an integral down, an integral problem down, if it's an integral type situation. So if you know to use an integral in a certain situation, you write down the problem. Even if you don't know how to solve it, you do get some credit for that. Every problem, every one of these questions is worth nine points each. So... Um, this first question, part A is worth two points, part B is worth three, three, and, wait, no, three, no, two, 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 two and three. There, there's my nine points, okay? But they split them up, like this first one, it's either all or none, basically, but then this one, if you know how to write what is going on, then that's a point. And then if you solve it, then that's another point. If you know how to write it, a point, and how to solve it, another point, and so on. So, if you're finding an amount, it's an integral. If you're finding a slope of some kind, a change in something, you're thinking derivative. Okay? So, when we look at this, and from zero seconds to six seconds, the particles move along the x-axis, the particle's position is not explicitly given. The velocity of the particle is this, its acceleration is this, and at point at time zero, it is at two. Is the speed of the art, is particle increasing or decreasing at time equals 5.5 seconds? Okay, so you would think, well, we're to think in speed, that's velocity. If I just stick 5.5 into the velocity function, I can find the velocity of it. 2 sine of e to the 5.5 over 4 plus 1. Obviously, we're on the calculator section. Because there's no way in heck you could do this without a calculator. Okay, so if you type this into your calculator, you should get negative 0 0.45337. And you're going, well, the velocity is negative. Not so fast, my friends. Speed and velocity are not exactly the same thing. Velocity is how fast you're going in a certain direction. Speed is how fast you're going. So, if we look at the acceleration at 5.5 seconds, 1 half e to the 5.5 over 4 cosine of e, e to the 5.5 over 4, that, if you put into your calculator, will be negative 1.35851. So, if the velocity is negative and it's accelerating negatively, okay, it's actually speeding up because it's going at a velocity in the negative direction and our acceleration is getting more negative. OK, 
Okay, so if these are both negative, then it's actually speeding up. Okay, a little hard to think about. Okay, that one is worth two points, all or none, to say speeding up. You basically got a 50 50 chance. Um, they would like to see you like plug in this to this. And if you get it wrong, but you show this work, is there a possibility you might get one point? Maybe. But, all right, part B. Okay, B, find the average velocity of the particle over that time. Average velocity, we just worked on this. Average, the average value of a function. How do we do average value of a function? One over six minus zero, the integral from zero to six of the velocity function, two sine of e to the uh, so then t over four plus one. If you write this down, it's one point. You don't even know I have to know how to solve it. If you write it down, it's one point. Now, you guys know how to use your calculator. So if you solve it, you get um, 1.949. This is worth one point. Okay? They're each part is worth one point. C. Total distance traveled. Be careful. Distance is not displacement. What do we do for distance? It's the what? Absolute value. So if you use the absolute value, you're going to get 12.573. You get one point, one point for that and one point for that. Okay? Those are both very simple. All of a sudden, that's four points of my nine points. B and C were actually pretty simple for us. Okay? D, I always hate Ds. I always think if I can get... A scrap of a point out of a D, it's, I'm golden, okay? Because basically to get a three on your AP Calc exam, you got to get 50% of the multiple choice and 50% of the points from here. There's 54 total points. If I can scrape out 27 points, I'm going to get a three. And that's enough to give me credit at USD, SDSU, or whatever, okay? So, scrape out half the points. I already got four here. I got to scrape out one more point, and I've got over half my points here. So, and this is worth three points. So, the particle changes direction exactly once. Find the position where the particle changes direction. Okay? Now, you get a point for knowing one very basic fact about changing direction. What's the most basic fact about changing direction? Not maximum, minimum. No. What'd you say? Mm, it might. You're correct there. But what if it crosses the x-axis, the velocity is what? Zero. When it changes directions, your velocity is zero. If you say something about saying the velocity is zero for this, it's worth a point. Ding, ding, ding. Your velocity is zero. So if you say 2 sine e to the 4 or t over 4 plus 1 equals zero, you said your velocity was equal to zero. So T is equal to, if you solve this, 5.19552. If you do that, bang, one point. Okay? You got a point out of that. Now, um, find the position of the particle at that time. Okay? So, how do we find it? Well, our position... And this, we just went over this not long ago. The, at time zero, my position is two, right? 
So if I go 2 plus the integral of 2 sine e to the t over 4 plus 1 from 0 to 5.19 five five two and I solved that to get fourteen point one three five writing the integral down is worth a point getting the answer is worth a point okay so um that is nine points of a of a problem okay that's where we got nine points of a problem at okay all right here we go as a pot cools, the temperature of the T is modeled by this function up here, where T is measured in minutes and H is measured in degrees Celsius. The values of H of T are selected at, in the table above. Use the data to approximate the rate at which the temperature of the T is changing at time equals 3.5. Show computations that lead to your answer. So you want to find about what is the change in the temperature at 3.5 minutes, okay? So, if we're talking about change in, what's this problem talking about, basically? Derivatives or integrals? Derivatives. derivatives. We're doing derivatives. Now, Basically, approximate the rate at which the temperature is changing at that time. It doesn't need you to do calculus there. It needs you to do algebra. What algebra do I need to find? I need to find the slope. The slope between 2 and 5, because halfway in between 5 is 3.5, right? So let's find the slope. So part A... Um, the temperature or the we're just um, finding the slope so the slope at 3.5 is approximately equal to 52 minus 60 over 5 minus 2 which is negative 8 over 3 which is negative um, 2.667 okay yeah, this is only worth one point, this part, because it's just pretty basic. Find this very basic slope, okay? Using the correct units, explain the meaning of this in the context of the problem. Use trapezoidal sums with four sub-intervals indicated in the table, okay? So, it's talking about this. This is the average value of the temperature, right? So you would say that's the average value of the temperature from time equals zero to time equals 10, okay? That's worth a one point. Okay, just got one point for that. Okay, now it's a, saying a trapezoidal sum. So I would make a little graph of this. Okay, at time equals zero, I'm at 66. At time equals zero. And it gets less, so I'm at 60 here, so I made a trapezoid. At two. At five. I'm at 52. At 9, I'm at 44. At 10, I'm at 43. Okay, I just drew that out. What should I do with this? Find the areas of the trapezoid. Okay, so from 0 to 2 is a height of 2. Um, so you take half of 60 plus 66 which is 63, 63 times 2 is 126. Um, and then 
This is 60 plus 52 is 100, uh, 112 yeah. divided by 3. What's 112 divided by 3? Because from 2 to 5 is 3. Oh, you, you got to take half of that, though. Ooh, so this, yeah, so that's right. This one is right. So, so take, all right, so take this times three divided by two. Yeah, so 112 times three divided by two. What do we get? 168. And then this is four, so add these up and take it times four divided by two or just take it times two. 52 and 44 is 96 times 2 is 192. And then this is 87. And half of 87 is what? 45. What? 43.5. Yeah, that would that's common sense, Mr. Rearspock. Why can't you do that in your head? Okay. So if you add these up, they add up to 529.5, but you're taking the average of it. So you take that times one tenth and you get 52.95 degrees is the average tenth. Okay, this is worth three points. Doing the trapezoidal sum is worth a point and doing this is uh, worth a point. Okay, given the answer. Okay, evaluate from 0 to 10 using the correct unit. Explain the mean in context of the problem. Of Now you're doing from 0 to 10 of the first derivative of this. Okay, what's the integral of the first derivative of this? This is how much the temperature drops or the the rate of temperature the rate of the the integral of the change in temperature is basically the temperature drop right how much the temperature drops in 10 minutes okay so if we do that um Basically, it's 66 minus 43, which is 23 degrees. That's just a simple subtraction problem. So you have to just understand what this means. The integral of the first derivative is what's happening. And h of t is the heat, the change of heat. So how much temperature drops in 10 minutes. Finally, d. At time equals zero, biscuits with a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius are removed from the oven. The temperature of the biscuits at time t is modeled by that differentiable function b of b prime equals negative 3.84 e to the negative 1.73 t. Using the given models, at time equals 10, how much cooler are the biscuits than the t? So, um, so you got to go change in temperature. So it's again, the integral. Now, what did the biscuits start out at? A 100 plus the integral from zero to 10 minutes of negative one, uh, negative 13.84 E to the negative 0 0.173 T equals okay and that's 8.817 no 34.18 there you go sorry 34.18275 okay that's the temperature of the biscuits at that time the temperature of the t is it T is 43, so you take 43 minus this, and it's a difference of 
degrees cooler. Okay, so that is worth a point. The integral is worth a point, and um, knowing to do a subtraction problem there is worth a point. Okay, so let's do one more quick before lunch, and then we'll go for lunch. And this week, I'm sorry to say that I got to sell prom. I'm involved with selling prom tickets every day. So we're going to have to go on the first bell every day this week, even though I think our week is a second bell. Dang it. All right. All right. Let these regions be these two things. So you got f of x and g of x. Okay. This is definitely f of x. This is definitely g of x. Because this looks like a sine cosine curve type of thing. And this looks like a cubic curve. So you can figure out which one is f of x, which one is g of x. Write the equation for the line tangent to the graph at, of f at x equals 1 half. So at 1 half, this point is 1. We're supposed to do the tangent to the curve. If the line is tangent to the curve, it's the first derivative of the curve at 1 half, right? So, let's take the first derivative of f of x. What would that be? 24x squared. What's the first derivative at 1 half? 24 times 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth times 24, which is 6. 6 is the slope. So, it says write an equation for the tangent line. Well, the tangent line, here's your slope, here's your point, y minus y1 equals my slope times x minus x1. So y minus 1 equals 6x minus 3, y equals 6x minus 2, right? y equals 6x minus 2. I haven't even looked at this one yet. Um, and if you know how to find the slope, that's worth a point. If you know the equation, that's a point. Boom, two points. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, what's the area of that? We just got done with this. How do we find the area of it? It's just simply the integral from where to where. Zero to one half of sine of x sine of pi x minus 8x cubed, okay? Sine of g of x minus f of x, top curve minus bottom curve. You throw that in your calculator, and you get, oh, they want the actual. So, actually, what I just got done writing here is worth, um, a couple points. I wonder if this is a calculator or non-calculator. I wish I knew. Um, because this is very possibly a non-calculator one. So I think this is a non-calculator one. So you have to do this longhand out, okay, to show your work. What's the integral of sine? Negative cosine of pi x with a 1 over pi in front because it's the chain rule minus um, x to the fourth with a 2 in front from 1 half to 0. I'm 99% sure this is a non-calculator question. So it's 1 over pi cosine of pi over 2 because put in the one half minus two times one half to the fourth power minus one over pi cosine of zero minus two times zero to the fourth power. Okay, what's the cosine of zero? 
Oh, it's negative cosine, isn't it? Yep, it's negative cosine. All right, so cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So 0 times that is 0. 1 half to the 4th power is 16. So it's negative 1 eighth. So 0 minus 1 eighth minus, and then if it's cosine is 1, it's minus a negative 1 over pi. So it's plus 1 over pi, and then that's 0. So it's negative 1 eighth plus 1 over pi. This is actually worth four points. Two points for showing your work. One point for knowing that you write an integral. Two points for showing your work. And one point for the answer. Four points there. You got a couple points there. So you're already six of the nine points on this one. Okay. The last point. Write but do not evaluate an integral for the volume of the solid generated around the horizontal line of y equals one. So if we're going around a solid around there, it's the integral from where to where? Zero to one half of the further away line, which is one minus f of x squared with a pi in front, forgot about the pi, minus the closer line, y one minus the g of x, so it's sine of pi x squared. And it says, write but do not evaluate, because this would be fairly tough to evaluate. Okay, can you do it? Yes, but it'd be fairly tough to evaluate. So they just want to know if you can write that. That is where three point, you know, basically three points. Um, yeah. If you know, if you know, if you put just the numbers here down, the zero to one half, that's worth a point and two points for the rest of it. So that's three points. Okay. So I think that the, the two question part, there's a two question part, which is worth, which is the calculator part. And then there's a four question part, which is a non calculator part. I think you get a half hour for the two question part and an hour for the four question part. So 15 minutes, basically a problem. So, but they're separated because of calculator and non calculator. There's six for the, there's six questions for the free response. And then multiple choice, I'll tell you later. Uh, at the end of the period, I'll tell you how much those are. Six? There's only six free response, but six of them have parts A, B, C, D, and so on. So we just did three of them right now. Okay? So. No. But, all right. Um, basically 50% on each. Or no, total, like, there's 54 points on the free response. If you get 27 points, that's basically worth a three on that. And then if there's, like, 70, if there's, like, 70 multiple choice, you need to get at least 35 of them. Which you think, oh, that's not too hard. Well, we'll see once you, you start playing with those multiple choice problems. Yeah, the two combined to be one section point wise. Yep. All right. Yeah, yeah. What's the highest